broken to carry any weight at a steading stump, much less the great stump, of course, but not bad. Go on. Trollocs, he breathed. That was what it was. Thousands of trollocs in black spiked mail spilling out of the trees at a run with scythe-curved swords raised, shaking their spiked spears, some carrying torches. Trollocs as far as he could see to left and right. Not thousands, tens of thousands. Aerith pushed in beside him at the window and gasped. So many. Are we going to die, Loyal? She did not sound afraid. She sounded... Excited. Not if I can warn Rand and the others. He was already starting for the door. Only I, Sedai, and Ashaman could save them now. Here, my boy, I think we may need these. He turned just in time to catch the long-handled axe that Elder Hammond tossed him. The other man's ears were back all the way, laid flat against his skull. Loyal realized his own were, too. Here, Aerith. "'his mother said calmly, lifting down one of the pruning knives. "'If they get inside, we will try to hold them at the stairs.' "'You are my hero, husband,' Aerith said as she took the knife's shaft in hand. "'But if you get yourself killed, I will be very angry with you.' "'She sounded as if she meant it. "'And then he and Elder Hammond were running down the corridor together, "'pounding down the stairs, bellowing at the tops of their lungs a warning— and a battle cry that had not been heard in over two thousand years. Trollocs coming! Up axes and clear the field! Trollocs coming! So I will take care of Tyr, Loghain, while you... Abruptly, Rand wrinkled his nose. It was not that he actually smelled a rotting midden heap suddenly, but he felt as if he did, and the feeling was getting stronger. Shadow spawn, Cadswain said quietly, putting down her embroidery and rising. His skin tingled as she embraced the source. Or maybe it was Olivia, walking briskly toward the windows after the green sister. Min stood drawing a pair of throwing knives from her coat sleeves. At the same instant, through the thick walls, he faintly heard Ogier shouting. There was no mistaking those deep drum like voices. Trollocs coming! Up axes and clear the field! With an oath, he leaped to his feet and ran to a window. Trollocs in thousands came running through the light rain across the newly planted fields. Trollocs as tall as Ogier and taller. Trollocs with ram's horns and goat's horns, wolves' snouts, boars' snouts. Trollocs with eagles' beaks and crests of feathers. Muddy earth splashing beneath boots and hooves and paws. Silent as death, they ran. Black-clad Murdral galloped behind them, cloaks hanging as if they were standing still. He could see thirty or forty. How many more on other sides of the house? Others had heard the Ogier's cries, or maybe just looked out a window. Lightning began to fall among the charging trollocs, silvery bolts that struck with a roar and hurled huge bodies in every direction. In other places the ground erupted in flames, fountaining dirt and parts of trollocs, Heads, arms, legs wheeling through the air. Balls of fire struck them and exploded, each killing dozens. But on they ran as fast as horses, if not faster. Rand could not see the weaves that drew some of those lightning bolts. Now that they were discovered, the Trollocs began to shout. A wordless roar of rage. In the thatch-roofed outbuildings, large, sturdy barns and stables, some of Bashir's Saldaeans, stuck their heads out and quickly pulled them back again, drawing the doors shut behind them. "'You told your Aes Sedai they could channel to defend themselves?' he said calmly. "'Do I look fool enough not to?' Loghain snarled. At another window, he already held Saedin, nearly as much as Rand could draw. He was weaving as fast as he could. "'Do you intend to help, or just watch, my Lord Dragon?' There was entirely too much sarcasm in that, but now was not the time to bring it up. Drawing a deep breath, Rand gripped the casement on either side of the window against the dizziness that would come. The dragon's gold-maned heads on the backs of his hands seemed to writhe, and reached out to seize the power. His head spun as Saedin flooded into him, icy flames and crumbling mountains, a chaos trying to pull him under, but blessedly clean. 
He still felt the wonder of that. His head spun and his stomach wanted to empty itself, the odd illness that should have gone with the taint. Yet that was not why he clung to the casement even harder. The one power filled him, but in that moment of dizziness, Luz Theron had seized it away from him. Numb with horror, he stared at the Trollocs and Murdral racing toward the outbuildings. With the power in him, he could make out the pins fastened to massive mailed shoulders, the silver whirlwind of the Offright Band, and the blood-red trident of the Cobal, the forked lightning of the Gremlan, and the hooked axe of the Algol, the iron fist of the Daimon, and the red blood-stained fist of the Noman. And there were skulls, the horned skull of the Dovol, and the piled human skulls of the Gargale, and the skull cloven by a scythe-curved sword of the Jinnen, and the dagger-pierced skull of the Banshin. Trollocs liked skulls, if they could be said to like anything. It seemed the twelve principal bands might all be involved, and some of the lesser. He saw pins he did not recognize, what seemed a staring eye, a dagger-pierced hand, a man-shape wrapped in flames. They neared the outbuildings, where swords were beginning to thrust through the thatch, as the Saldaeans tried to cut ways onto the roofs. Thatch was tough. They would need to work desperately hard. Odd the thoughts that came when a madman who wanted to die might well kill you in the next heartbeat. Flows of air pushed the casement in front of him out in a shower of shattered glass and fragmented wood. My hands, Luz Theron panted. Why can't I move my hands? I need to raise my hands. Earth, air, and fire went into a weave Rand did not know. Six of them at once. Except that as soon as he saw the spinning, he did know. Blossom of fire. Six vertical red shafts appeared among the Trollocs, ten feet tall and thinner than Rand's forearm. The nearest Trollocs would be hearing their shrill whine, but unless memories had been passed down from the War of the Shadow, they would not realize they were hearing death. Loose Theron spun the last thread of air and fire blossomed. With a roar that shook the manor house, each red shaft expanded in a heartbeat to a disk of flame thirty feet across. Horned heads and snouted heads flew into the air, and pinwheeling arms booted legs and legs that ended in paws or hooves. Trollocs a hundred paces and more away from the explosions went down, and only some got up again. Even as he was spinning those webs, Luce Theron spun six others. Spirit touched with fire, the weave for a gateway, but then he added touches of earth, so and so. The familiar silvery-blue vertical streaks appeared, spaced out not far from the manor house, ground ran new well, rotating into, not openings, but the misty back of a gateway, four paces by four. Rather than remaining open, they rotated shut again, opening and shutting continuously, and rather than remaining fixed, they sped toward the Trollocs. Gateways and yet not. Death gates. As soon as the death gates began to move, Luce Theron knotted the webs, a loose knotting that would hold only for minutes before allowing the whole weave to dissipate, and began spinning again. More death gates, more blossoms of fire, rattling the walls of the house, blowing Trollocs apart, flinging them down. The first of the speeding death gates struck the Trollocs and carved through them. It was not just the slicing edge of the constantly opening and closing gateways. Where a death gate passed, there simply were no Trollocs remaining. My hands, the madman howled. My hands! Slowly, Rand raised his hands, stuck them through the opening. Immediately, loose Theron wove fire and earth in intricate combination, and red filaments flashed from Rand's fingertips, ten from each fanning out. Arrows of fire, this. He knew. As soon as those vanished, more appeared, so fast they seemed to flicker rather than actually go away. Trollocs, struck by the filaments, jerked as flesh and blood, heated in a flash beyond boiling, erupted, jerked and fell, holes blown entirely through their thick bodies. Often two or three behind fell victim as well before a filament died. He spread his fingers and moved his hands slowly from side to side, spreading death across the whole line. Blossoms of fire appeared that were not his weaving, and death gates, slightly smaller than loose Theron's, and arrows of fire that must have been low gains. The other Ashaman were paying attention, but few would be where they could see those last two webs spun. Trollocs fell by the hundreds, the thousands, riven by lightning bolts and balls of fire, blossoms of fire, and death gates and arrows of fire, the earth itself exploding beneath their feet, yet on they raced, roaring and waving their weapons, 
Murdral riding close behind, black-bladed swords in hand. As they reached the outbuildings, some of the Trollocs surrounded them, pounding on the doors with their fists, prying at the boards of the walls with their swords and spears, tossing flaming torches onto the thatched roofs. Saldeans up there, working their horse bows as fast as they could, kicked the torches back down, but some hung up on the edges of the roof and flames began catching even on damp thatch. The fires, Rand thought at Luz Theron. The Saldeans will burn. Do something. Luz Theron made no reply, only wove death as fast as he could and hurled it at the Trollocs, death gates and arrows of fire. A murdral riddled by half a dozen red filaments was flung from its saddle, then another. A third lost its head to an arrow of fire in an explosion of boiled blood and flesh, but that one rode on, waving its sword, as if it did not know it was dead. Rand was seeking them out. If the Murdral were all killed, the Trollocs might well turn and run. Death gates and arrows of fire only loose there and spun now. The mass of Trollocs was too close to the manor house for blossoms of fire. Some of the Ashaman apparently did not realize that right away. The room shook to great booms. The whole manor house shook, as if struck by huge sledgehammers, shook as though about to shake apart. And then there were no more explosions, except where a fireball erupted, or the ground itself exploded to throw Trollocs like broken toys. The sky seemed to rain lightning. Silver-blue bolts struck continuously so close to the house that the hair on Rand's arms and chest tried to lift, the hair on his head. Some of the Trollocs succeeded in forcing open the doors to one of the barns and began flooding inside. He shifted his hands, cutting down those still outside with flickering red filaments that blew holes in them. Some had managed to get inside, but those the Saldeans would have to deal with themselves. On another barn and a stable, flames were beginning to ripple up the thatch, men coughing from the acrid smoke as they shot their bows. Listen to me, Luce Theron, the fire. You must do something. Luce Theron said nothing, just spun his webs to kill Trollocs and Murdral. Logain, Rand shouted. The fires! Put them out! The other man did not answer either, but Rand saw the weaves that pulled the heat from the flames, killing them. They just vanished, leaving behind cold, blackened thatch where not even tendrils of smoke rose. Death walked among the Trollocs, but they were so close that even the explosions of fireballs rattled the house now. Suddenly there was a murdral afoot beside the window, pale eyeless face as calm as an Aes Sedai's, black sword already stabbing toward him. Two thrown Aeel spears took it in the chest, and a throwing knife blossomed in its throat, but it only staggered before resuming the thrust. Rand bunched his fingers together, and just before the blade reached him, a hundred arrows of fire ripped through the murdral, flinging it back twenty paces to lie riddled and leaking black blood onto the ground. Murdral seldom died right away, but this one never twitched. Hurriedly, Rand searched for more targets, but he realized that Luce Theron had stopped channeling. He could still feel the goosebumps that told him Cadswain and Olivia held the power, still feel Syedine and Loghain but the other man was weaving no more webs either. Outside, the ground lay carpeted with bodies and parts of bodies from the fields almost to the manor house walls, within paces of them. A few horses belonging to Murdral still stood, one holding up a foreleg as if it were broken. A headless Murdral staggered about, flailing wildly with its sword, and here and there a trollic jerked or tried to lift itself and failed, but nothing else moved. It's done, he thought. It's done, Luce Theron. You can release Syedine now. Harlan and Anila were standing on the table, veiled and spears in hand. Min stood beside them, her face grim, a throwing knife in either hand. The bond was full of fear, and not for herself, he suspected. They had saved his life, but he had to save it himself now. A close-run thing, Loghain muttered. If this had happened before I arrived... A close-run thing. He gave himself a shake and released the source, turning away from his glassless window. Did you intend keeping these new weaves for your favorites, like Taim? Those gateways. Where did we send those Trollocs? I just copied your weave exactly. It doesn't matter where they went, Rand said absently. His attention was focused on Luce Theron. The madman, the bloody voice in his head, drew a little deeper on the power. Let go, man. Shadow Spawn can't survive passing through a gateway. I want to die, Luce Theron said. 
I want to join Ilyena. If you really wanted to die, why did you kill Trollocs? Rand thought. Why kill that Murdro? People will find groups of dead Trollocs and maybe Murdro without a mark on them, he said aloud. I seem to remember dying, Luce Theron murmured. I remember how I did it. He drew deeper still, and small pains grew in Rand's temples. Not too many in any one place, though. The destination shifts every time a death gate opens. Rand rubbed at his temples. That pain was a warning. He was close to the amount of cyadine he could hold without dying or being burnt out. You can't die yet, he told Luce Theron. We have to reach Tom and Gaiden or the world dies. A death gate, Loghain said, his voice tinged with distaste. Why are you still holding the power? he asked suddenly. And so much. If you're trying to show me that you're stronger than I am, I already know it. I saw how large your... your death gates were compared to mine. And I'd say you're holding every drop of cyadine that you can safely. That certainly caught everyone's attention. Min tucked her knives away and leapt down from the table, the bond suddenly so 